Hey everyone, so this video is on solving proportions. I'm going to try to keep it as short as I can, so let's get right into it. The two basic vocabulary things that you need to know are ratio and proportion. A ratio is just a relationship between two numbers. Oftentimes we'll show, you'll, you may see this set up, or three of four. What you're most likely to see when dealing with them in algebra anyway, is them being set up as fractions, so three out of four. That's our relationship. There's three here and four here. Um, a proportion, I don't know what, what a proportio is. I'm interested now. Um, what a proportion is, is when you set two of them equal to each other that have the same relative value. So we'll do three-fourths and then six over eight. Well, if you take three and multiply it by one and a third, and a third of three, of course, would be one because it's one out of three. So you'll get three plus one is four. If you do six times uh, one and a third, so it's like one-third of three would be two, so six plus two, uh, you'll get eight. But the interesting part really is that you can do this relationship. So three times two gives you six, and th four times two gives you eight. So you can see that that's a proportion because they're equal to each other. Now, where do we go from here? So say I wanted to use um, two fours. And I want to know, well, what is it if the numerator for the other one is let's say 12, and then I'm looking for something here. Now, the easy way to do this one, since it's so simple, is you know that 2 times 6 is 12. Well, you just do 4 times 6 and get 24. You may also be able to see that 2 times 2 is 4. So you just do 12 times 2, and guess what? You end up with 24. But other than doing that, when you have more advanced ones, we're going to use cross products. So would, uh, I did 2 and 6. Six, I think? Two and four, sorry. And then I wanted to know, okay, this is 12 over x. Uh, so what I can do is actually do cross products, which products means multiply, so we're going to do cross multiply, and then we're going to divide. The reason that I want to call it cross products as opposed to cross multiply and divide is just so you'll write the next step out. Because in the easy ones, it's not really all that necessary. You do, you know, two times x is two x, four times two is 12, uh, four times two is 48, 12, what am I thinking? 4 times 12 is 48. That's what I'm trying to say. It's all mixing together in my brain. Uh, so I'm just going to solve this equation. So divide by 2, divide by 2, and x ends up equaling 24, just like we said before. Also, apparently, asterisk equals 24. But when you get into more advanced ones, cross multiplying and dividing doesn't work as easily so it's better just to write that step out so we're going to call it cross products just so you'll write this step out and then solve it all the way down and you know everything in math is relative so being able to um, how much you have to write down depends on how much you need to write down it's up to you choose your own adventure that sort of thing so let's do uh, a few problems of the types you might see we'll start out with a relatively simple one um, in this case and I you could try to think well what what do I have to do to make 10 become 8? That sort of thing. But I would rather just look at doing cross products. So 5 times 10 is 50, and 8 times x equals 8x. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that's not going to work out very nicely. Exactly. That's where uh, you start to see things get a little muddy. So you'll do 50, and to get rid of times 8, I'm going to divide by 8, of course. And as a decimal, it's 6.25, but I'm actually not going to leave it in a decimal. I want to put it in a fraction form, just because I think if it starts with fractions, it might as well end with it. But you can just adjust. It's not a big deal. 25 over 4. So there's that one. Pretty simple stuff. Now, uh, from here, the next one is a little bit more advanced. And these are the ones that cross multiply and divide doesn't really work. Um, well, it does in a way, but it's harder to do without writing it down. So we'll use cross products like a champion. 5 times 10, apparently this problem set, which was picked at random by the way, is really excited about the idea of 5 times 10. And now you see 4 times the term n minus 1. So anytime you do 4 times any number or constant term by a term, you'll probably need to set up a distributive property. So 4 times n minus 1. So from here, distribute a little bit. This is supposed to be 1n, so 4 times 1n is 4n. Uh, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, which we'll treat as minus 4. Here's my variable. I need to eliminate the minus 4, so I'm going to add 4 to it. 
and 50 plus 4 is 54. We're in the final stages where I need to divide. And I get 13 and a half as a uh, decimal. I don't know why I can't talk and say decimal today, but I can't. Uh, but as a fraction, you might write something like 27 over 2. Or you may want to make it 13 and 1 half. However you need to write the answer, there it is. So let's just check it, see how they got. See how the system created the problem? Yep, 27 over 2. So from here, okay. no, this is a good one. Um, so this one has more to it than the others. This one, cross, multiply, and divide, won't work at all, really. Uh, so 9 times m is 9m. And maybe it will work for you. I don't want to define your life. Uh, who am I to say? But it's easier if you write down this step. That way you don't make careless errors. That's really what hurts you in algebra, especially, uh, or pre-algebra or whatever class that you might be in. Uh, careless errors are generally the biggest problem because th this type of problem is not very difficult. It's just you drop a negative or you forget something little that you know how to do, and you say, well, I knew how to do it. Well, getting to the answer is kind of the purpose, so you have to get into a system. So uh, negative 8 over 5 is actually reduced as far down as it'll go, unless you want to make it negative 1 and th uh, 3 fifths or something like that. That's up to you. But the issue here is that um, you had m on both sides, or variable on both sides of the equation. So just move it over, you know, regular solving the equation stuff. These type of uh, problems generally come at the end of a solving equations section. So last one I'm going to do. Uh, once again, I'm going to use cross products just because I think it's an easier way to see everything as opposed to trying to do it all in your head. That's where things get lost. At least they do in mine. Of course, I also lose my car keys and I don't lose them in my head, I don't think. CT scans will determine that later. Anyway, so draw the line. You're going to do the distributive property here. 9R minus 81. Cat scan, that's what I meant to say. plus 15. So I'm dealing with this. Um, I need to bring together my universes of my r's. So in order to get rid of plus 3, I need to subtract 3. And this is supposed to be an r, as you can see when I try to draw or write quickly. Draw, write, whatever. I was making them together. Drite. When I drite quickly, I make that kind of difficult to read mistake. So in order to get rid of minus 81, I'm going to add 81. Ninety-six, and then I'm going to divide by six, and my final answer, r, is equal to sixteen. So it took me to like one of the largest ones to finally get an answer that comes out halfway decent that doesn't look so odd. But that's it. It's pretty simple. Just do cross products, set it up, um, and then you should. And visually speaking, the early ones you could probably do them in your head. Um, but it's in your best interest to just build a pattern of writing things down so you could see it. That way, little careless things don't become those little things that end up costing you a lot of points or you know hurt your overall progress in the in the system.